So we're just up here right now with uh, Rasta Pasta Pup, Lola, Soko, we got Diz, we got Doc in the mix. Um, I'm doing kind of like really, really, really kind of random, um, what's up, what's up? Random recalls for, uh, for Doc, I'm letting him kind of do his thing. The topic that we're gonna get into is a, is a pretty interesting one, it's kind of like de dear to my heart. So we're gonna jump into that in just a little bit. But uh, you can see Doc's jumping into play. He gets a little too much. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, call him in a second. Um, and we're, we're doing some uh, feeding for, for him in the middle of his play. I'm working on his recall. Doc here, good job, sit. Good, yes. And then I'm letting him kind of go back into his thing. So we're working on his recall, All right? Every now and then we'll let him, he's starting to get more goofy, which is great. Oh no, I have 20% uh, battery, so. I'm gonna calm him down, that's coming too much. Doc, come here bud, hey, good, hey, come here, nope, good boy, place, good, down, awesome, so he's gonna hang out, I'm actually gonna reward that, good, because I want him to know that um, listening to me being called off and actually being in an area where at resting time is actually relatively relaxing, it's a really good choice. So I have to be able to call him because his play is good, he's starting to get more comfortable, he's getting goofy, but with that also comes some, uh, some behaviors we might not like, so um, he's gotta learn how to kind of tone it down. Um, so that's that, that's pretty good on his end, he's doing fantastic, but what I wanna get into, flip this real quick, Lola, beat it, go, go, go. What I wanna get into is um, the concept of nature corrects the topic of nature corrects. And it's, uh, it's been something that I've spoken about for quite some time. Let me uh, grab my, my phone charger. Um, what's up, there's the ugly mug, there it is. Um, I'm gonna kinda get over here real quick and try to actually charge this while I do it. But basically, here's, here's kinda the scoop. And, and one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this was because, hello Jackie, how are you? Nope, give me one sec. I might place them and chill them out for a minute so it makes it easier for Doc to be successful. So give me one quick sec. Soko, place. Good. Down. Thank you, sir. Dizzy, come here, bud. Place. Good. Down. Thank you. Help him be successful, right? Good girl. So. Back to my ugly face that you guys missed. Hey, what's up, Healy? How are you? Okay, so this is an interesting topic. I think it's a pretty common sense one. Hold on. Okay, there we are. Now we're back. Um, but it's an important one. So there's a, a couple of reasons why I bring this up, and it's been, it was a topic that was brought up with my clients uh, earlier today. Um, hey. Nope. Down. Got to follow through, right? <laughs> New to my skull. All right. Awesome. Good. Uh, well, I appreciate that. That means a lot. Um, thank you. Thank you for, for watching them. And uh, of course, for anybody that is new that doesn't know, you can catch. Hi, how are you? You can catch all of. Per Shut up, King. You're not new. Um, you can catch all Periscopes um, archived on catch.me. So that's K A T C H dot me. Um, we also have an Instagram page, we have a Facebook page. Uh, YouTube channel, lots of different things on every single social media platform. So definitely worth kind of checking all that stuff out. Um, and of course, I, I really, really appreciate you guys coming on here, engaging, commenting, and, and really, really important uh, for me is Harding, Harding for the free content. So the topic that we're gonna get into is Nature Corrects. And one of the reasons why I wanted to get into this is because there's a lot of people that like have these kind of like theories and understanding that like there's no need to ever correct your dog or, or kind of do this and, and do that or, or it might be inhumane to correct your dog and stuff like that. And there are a lot of different ways to correct. Um, most importantly, the definition of a correction, and I don't know the exact definition, but, but correcting is some, correct means right. If you're correcting something, technically you're fixing something that is wrong. 
or you're indicating that is wrong, you should do this. If I was someone's secretary and um, I thought I was doing a fantastic job and I was sending out emails but I was going about it the wrong way or an assistant, I would expect, nope, good, down. Gotta follow through here, right? Down. Good, so I'm just following through with dark. This is really important. Thank you for the hearts. So it's fixing something that is not right. If I was that secretary, I would, and I, I think I'm doing a fantastic job. All of a sudden my boss comes. I wouldn't want him or her to like look and be like, wow, this person's been doing this wrong. Let me ignore the mistakes that they're making. Wait till they make a good job and just applaud them on that. I, I might applaud and praise and say they're doing a great job when they are, but at the same time, if they're making that mistake, I wouldn't let it go ignore it. In fact, I would say, listen, man, like, you know, I understand you didn't mean to do this, but like, you cannot answer emails that way. And I would, I would correct the problem, right? So a correction somewhere along the lines by some people became this negative thing when, when it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? Same thing with, uh, with uh, punishments being associated with abuse. You know what I mean? How, how often as little kids have we been punished where our parents have been like, you're punished, go to your room, right? And here's another interesting concept, which is a little bit off tangent, but we're gonna get into the good stuff here in just a minute, is people that are always worried about creating their dogs and saying, well, I don't want Creed to be a punishment or Creed is only a punishment, but I actually believe it can sort of be both, right? So yes, there, this is, you're actually the reason why, uh, Laura, why I got into this. Hey, nope, place. So I'm just following through with Doc here. Down. Good. Um, and I'm sure he wants a little bit of water. We're gonna get that to him in a little bit. But uh, yeah, that, that, you're one of the reasons why I got into it. And then I also bumped into like an old, old kind of client or dog that, that reminded me her second dog um, or her first dog is, is, is one that holds dear to my heart because he was one that, that reminded me, wow, like I have an opportunity to either fix a problem or at some point nature is going to do it and nature is going to do it more harshly. So before I get into that, which is like the juice of the topic, you guys want to stick around for this, is, um, uh, shoot, what were we talking about? Yeah, so like I would want, I would want somebody to tell me if I was doing something wrong. I would want them to correct it. If I'm working out and my form is bad, don't have me continue working out and, and lift and it's not even for a difficult dog, it's even for easy dogs, but yeah, you're right about that. That, that is true, Daisy Mae. Um, it's, if I'm lifting with bad form and all of a sudden I'm trying to go heavier, I have a really, really good shot at injuring myself. And if you don't correct my form and have me working at, at holding my posture and positioning and doing it the right way, if you're not gonna do it, at some point I'm gonna learn. And nature's version of a correction from that, that point of view is I'm gonna put on heavier weights and I'm gonna pull a muscle and I might injure myself. And here's the, here's the thing, you could have corrected it and you might have told me, listen, your form sucks, which might have been a little bit harsh. Your form sucks, but listen, you gotta really fix that before and I, I might have not wanted to hear that because I wanted to lift heavy and, and the reality is I wasn't at a, a point to do that until I work on my form, but you told me and you prevented an injury, right? So let's look at things from more of a natural kind of point of view. Hearts people, thank you Lisa, I appreciate that. Rattlesnake aversion. Rattlesnake aversion is something that's pretty big on the West Coast um, because naturally dogs are curious about some things, especially dogs that have prey drive. So I know my dog, a lot of puppies will all of a sudden see a snake that's kind of moving in the grass, see a little bit of a tail, and go, holy cow, that might be a toy that I can have fun with. And we have an opportunity to teach a dog not to do it and correct it. And in some situations, it might need to be harsh so a dog knows there's no ifs, ands, and buts because if I'm not around to correct you, I don't want nature, which in this case is the rattlesnake, to correct you. So what they do on the West Coast is, while we use remote collars here on a communication-based level and we do it really, really soft communication, there are times where we go into corrections and that's later. A rattlesnake aversion is, is an act of God, uh, that's what they call it, type of correction, where it's an extremely high level, usually on remote collars that are not soft like this. It's usually like collars that are, are meant to kind of really, really send a message. And what they do is they'll trap these rattlesnakes and they'll put them in like a clear glass with a couple of holes so the dogs can hear it. And when a dog goes, oh, what's that? I'm curious. The owner has no association with it. It'll be a high level, pop, and the dog gets super scared and it's like, whoa, that's so weird. That snake 
what the fuck, what the heck is that? And then they get a little bit curious and as they're getting softer, boop, it happens again. The dog goes, nope, I learned my lesson. You stay away from those things, whatever that is, those, those tambourines or those baby shit because you stay the heck away from that. And here's the thing, in a situation like that, that version of a correction, which is relatively harsh, might have caused a, a temporary form of pain, especially with the remote collars that they tend to use for that, which are different from these. Um, but at the same time, what's, what's harsher? Someone who actually corrected and said, listen, you cannot do that. Or nature's version said, I don't want to be mean to my dog. And then they learn the hard way when the rattlesnake bites and they go, yeah, I learned my lesson, but now it's too late and that dog is dead. So that's a version of nature's correction, right? Another version of nature's correction out here is like not teaching off-leash recall or something. And, and, and modern or urban uh, nature are vehicles and cars and stuff, you know? So now we have a dog who loves chasing tennis balls and we, we've been nervous to kind of correct and we've been nervous to kind of teach a dog recall. And now the tennis ball goes across the street in the middle of Houston Street, which is extremely busy. And because we didn't want to teach our dog, which involves teaching the dog what to do, as well as teaching the dog what not to do, we decided not to do it in a way that sent a message. And now as a result, the dog found or received that message from someone that was harsher, right? So hold on one second. Nope. Place. Good. This is Doc right here. Down. Good. So we got these guys and this is just good training for him while I, we do this. So now nature's correction is that dog just got, got hit by a taxi cab. And guess what? Your dog is dead or your dog is injured and your dog, maybe thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars later of surgery, you, you could have just corrected your dog, right? So that's another version. Um, a couple things that we look at is dogs, dogs in dog parks. Like I have an opportunity during pack socialization to be a referee where dogs know, listen, direction comes from me. You take direction from me, you're gonna be okay. I'm gonna show you how to live in this world. And then what happens is, thank you, man, I appreciate it. What happens now is, is no one's advocating for this dog that is, is really being pestered, 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 no one's sticking up. Finally, he's like, man, no one else is gonna handle this. And then that dog lunges and snaps. That's a dog that gets kicked out of the dog park or that's a dog that gets kicked out of daycare because no one corrected that puppy. And finally, the dog needed to do it. The dog might've been responsible enough and did it well, or the dog wasn't responsible enough to hold that title, that position, and did it way too harsh. And then a fight broke out. You see what I mean? That could have been our job, but nature did it, right? Sometimes nature's corrections, and more often than not, are way more harsh than what our versions would be. So nature corrects. We have an opportunity to show them how to live in that world before learning the hard way. Sometimes learning the hard way is okay, but if, if, I, can, if I can give my dog information and say, hey, listen, man, you really don't want to go about that, and I can save a dog's life, why wouldn't I, right? So corrections are a fantastic thing. Nature corrects, why wouldn't we? That's, that, that's kind of the, the point of this... Um, of this topic, of this periscope. I had a couple of other examples that I totally, totally forgot. But um, do you guys have questions about that? Does that make sense? Is there anybody that maybe disagrees with that? Let's, let's get into it. And I'm sure some other thoughts will kind of pop into my head as we, as we uh, kind of move forward. Oh, you wanna know what? Hold that for, hold the questions for a quick second. Keep that kind of typed. Um, don't send it just yet. So the story was, I bumped into a friend who was walking a, thanks, man, JBZ, I appreciate it, who was walking um, a dog of, of a lady who, when I first started training dogs, this was her second dog. She had a first dog. Her first dog was his name Max. And I already know I can even talk about the names. Um, I have Max's a poster of him in my office um, at my apartment because um, it was him that allowed me to kind of come to the realization that, wow, like, you could be more humane by sometimes being strict and being not so in a lot of situations it's not even harsh but sometimes um doing what nature will do whether whether you're there to do it or not right so basically nope six so we have people by the window um a lot of people stop by and it's just a little curiosity so this lady had a dog dog's name was max and max was there's two types of dogs there's dogs that are bad dogs that, that need training, and then there's good dogs that deserve it. Max was a good dog that deserved training, right? Unfortunately, he didn't really get it. We had a soft owner in every way, shape, or form. Doesn't mean you need to be like physically firm with your dog, but a very soft lack of structure kind of, kind of a, a, a woman and, and owner 
And um, this individual did not believe in correcting her dog. And, and there was a lot of, like, he was a pretty easy-go-lucky, uh, or an easy-going, kind of happy-go-lucky dog, but there were some situations where it was like a Marley and Me type dog, where it was like, you just, just give the dog that structure. It's not, it's not as bad of a dog as you're making it out to be. You just don't give it boundaries and rules, right? So, so what happened was, um, I, I would always tell her, and she didn't really believe, and this is at a time where I wasn't really, like, training. Like, I was training my dog and, like, walking dogs and doing training on the side, but, like, dream come true canine wasn't in existence. It didn't exist. So, like, I knew I was good with dogs, but I didn't really know what I was doing. Like, I, at least at, at, to the point where I, I know what I'm doing now. I, I still probably don't know what I'm doing, but I'm getting better, right? I try. Um, so, long story short, I hadn't seen her in a while. She didn't believe in corrections. Her dog was out of control and didn't really didn't need to be. What's up, Carla? How are you? And, um, like, a year goes by, and I see her dog, and her dog's on a muzzle. And um, I'm like, wow, you know, Christina, like, what? what's going on is like max getting aggressive now and she's like no i just walk him with a muzzle because he picks things up off the ground and um when he gets it in his mouth he gets really possessive and aggressive and he's bitten me so we just avoid the situation he doesn't pick anything up problem solved and you know like i kind of told her i wasn't like a master trainer or anything but i was like listen like you know it's kind of a band-aid on an amputated leg and she was like yeah but you know i don't want to correct him i don't want to be mean so this this doesn't make me the bad guy, he just can't pick it up and problem solved. Long story short, St. Gennaro's Feast, toward the end, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of good food. The dog picked up a piece of chicken one day when she wasn't walking in with a muzzle. It had a barbecue skewer in it. Thousands and thousands, it, it might have, I don't, I don't know how much, but thousands and thousands of dollars later, it, it, it's definitely in the teens, maybe even in the hundreds, it ripped the dog up inside that barbecue skewer. Right, interesting kind of concept though is that we're not allowed to correct the dog because it might be mean, but the second your dog needs help because it's ingested something and it's dying, it's okay for a doctor to rip your dog open, take that out, save your dog's life, which, which it may or may not work, and then have your dog be in months of pain with anesthetics and stuff, that's okay, but a correction that nine times out of 10 doesn't cause any type of pain, might cause a little bit of discomfort, maybe might be minuscule, like a pain for a second, is not allowed, but you're gonna run your dog to the doctor. So long story short, she had thousands and thousands of, of, of dollars of, of worth of surgery. The surgery wasn't effective. It saved the dog's life, the dog lived for another year. Um, to help raise money for the surgery, which they couldn't afford. They were selling these posters because her boyfriend at the time was an artist. I bought that poster or that picture for like $200 or something like that. She was selling it for 50, right? I still have that in, in my office because that was a memory. At that moment, I realized, wow, nature corrects. I could either teach this dog not to do something or at some point, there's a really good shot that the dog is gonna learn the hard way. And that hard way is gonna be way more harsh than what I would have ever done to teach you. Just don't do that, that's not acceptable. So it's a really, really interesting concept where it was like you, and I, I don't, I mean, I know she doesn't watch this, so I don't wanna like really be that hard on her, but at the same time, you killed your dog because you could have stopped it by correcting and said nature corrected, and that was a really, really harsh correction. And now you're hundreds of thousands of dollars out of money for surgery that didn't work, training would have cost you less. And this is not to, 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 to beat up on her and make fun of her, she doesn't watch this anyway, but you know, you could have, your dog could have been here today if you would have just taught your dog not to do it and, and been a little firm when needed, you know what I mean? Instead, that chicken skewer was a thing that taught it a lesson and it was a lesson that that was it, man. You, you, that was it, you know what I mean? So. Um, Interesting stuff. We can go into our comments now. I know some of you guys were holding that stuff. If you guys have questions, if you have feedback, good stuff, bad stuff, I don't care. Periscope, let's do it as long as we're being cordial on here. Um, this, this is a, a kind of a Blake's thoughts on. I know I know it didn't title it that way, but um, that's what it is. So if you guys, so true, some people have to learn the hard way. Yeah, you know, it's a really interesting thing. It's, um, it's, it's tough. Hey, Lara, are you still here um, with, with Toby, Jed, and Leo? Because I, I wanted to kind of bring something up to you. And, um, well, thank you, Daisy, that means a lot. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's a really interesting 911. Man, if you're just joining now, you missed a good scope. You guys gotta go back. So for those of you that this is your first, any, 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 any question, if you missed the scope, uh, for those of you that this is your first time kind of watching the scopes, all of our scopes are replayable and reviewable here on Periscope for 24 hours. After that, thanks, JBZ. Um, after that, they can be, they're archived on catch.me. Catch.me is a website, K-A-T-C-H.me, and you search Dream Country Canine, everything is on there. 
Mm. Lowest levels. Yeah, honestly, man, um, it's you can really. I, I like to start dogs off around like three, four months. The, the three, the three to five month is, is is a good time to kind of start your dog. You can do it earlier. I know people that do it earlier, but um, we are we're gonna do a different a, a topic between the difference. You know what? We'll do it on here too. Um, the difference between corrections and interrupters. I haven't given this thought, so I, I, I could probably technically really put it into terms where like, wow, this guy defined it, but, but um, just, just off the top of my head, I'm going to go ahead and say that an interrupter is a form of a correction. There are a variety of different types of corrections, right? A correction could be you're just fixing something that, or you're, you're, you're making them, making the dog, no, I don't want you to do that right now, I'm going to correct you, I'd rather you do this. A correction could also be something that's firm that you don't ever do that, and I'm getting that message across. An interrupter, this dog is doing something else and you want the dog's attention, so you're stopping them technically from doing something and you're getting their attention. And it's like, what? So you're stopping them from doing that to get their attention. An interrupter, in my opinion, qualifies as a correction because a correction, exactly, it's a shame the dog paid with his life and the dog didn't know any better. Um, a correction, by my standards, doesn't need to be something that's harsh or mean. So, so an interrupter does qualify as a correction because there are a variety of different types of corrections based on the message that you're trying to get across. So for me, that's the different types. I don't have them clearly like defined, but I mean like for example, you can correct your dog because they did something that might be appropriate in, in certain situations, but based on where you are, it's not. So you're saying, hey, don't do that, do this. There's also dogs that might um, be doing something that you say, I don't want you to do that right now, I'd rather you do this. There's also dogs that might do something that you might correct harsher and get a message across, don't ever do that again. You, you know what I mean? So there, there depends on what, what you're looking to do. I also qualify a correction as a form of recall in a way because you're technically calling your dog off of something. Um, how do you correct whining in a crate when bark collar doesn't detect it? That's a great question. Um, um, whining kind of depends. There's a time, there's a time where I will, huh? Yeah. Hold on, hold on one sec. Let's say this. Hey. Nope. You watch my YouTube videos? You seen me before? So you knew I was recording? Oh, okay. All right, guys, be good. So that's what you had some of these guys kind of doing. What he asked was, he goes, you, you make YouTube videos? And then I was like, yeah. He was like, you recording right now? I was like, yeah. He was like, I told you. I seen them before. I seen them. Um, okay, so the dog has learned. So this is the thing. Um, there are two... When you're dealing with whining, there's, I'm famous. No, <laughs> there are different types of, um, there's whining that I ignore, there's whining that I correct, right? Um, if I think, yeah, yeah, actually, we, we just covered that, right? Is that, is that Kate? I think, yeah, we just literally, I just texted her about this. So if a dog has gone from barking and being out of control in the crate and now it's kind of decreased to whining, if the dog is on the decrease to something, and I think like they're on the track and they're making progress, I might ignore that because I know they're not escalating. And if I have a bark collar on, if they escalate, they get caught. So they're staying here. If they're not here and they're staying here, they have a better shot at getting here, right? So I might ignore it. If it's becoming consistent, consistent, and it's not helping after a while, I might look to correct that. Hey, no, boom. And, and, and I might correct it and then ignore the dog. And there's different ways to correct. It depends on where you are with your dog, right? It could be remote collar. It could be vocal. It could be tapping on the crate. It could be a verbal. It could be shaking a car, a, a can of, of marbles. I don't know. Um, it, there's different ways to kind of do that. But I can correct it and then not say anything. Or I can interrupt that with a correction. Nope. Boom. Something that's a little bit more firm, higher. And then on a lower level, give the dog something else to do and down them. Right. Um, if the dog is doing really, really well, and then it's kind of whining for a little bit, I'll kind of test and see where that's coming from. Where is that going? Is it escalating? It's escalating. I gotta end it. Boom. Right. And if I feel like I have a shot, the moment something starts to end it and get the message across, point blank period, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, if 
if I feel that the dog is on a decline, on a decrease, I'm going to give the dog time to process and time to like really give them a shot. I think sometimes dogs get overcorrected and when they're getting overcorrected, what starts to happen is, is a dog's trying to do better, but you keep interrupting and you get them more and more and more stressed because the dog never has a time. You're expecting them to just flat out stop. And sometimes dogs need a little bit of time to kind of, to, to kind of get better. You know what I mean? They can't just flat out stop because sometimes anxiety and whining dogs aren't aware of that. So it's, it's a tough call to make and it takes a little bit of experience, but that's why sometimes you'll see studies where they say you don't correct this or you ignore this, but then you ignore it and it doesn't help because there's no right or wrong for that. It depends on, on where you are. And, and that's the same thing with studies for like certain tools. You know what I mean? How like correcting creates more anxiety if you're doing it wrong or, or prong collars or remote collars if you're doing it wrong. Yeah, food can, if you're doing it wrong too, can create the same type of anxiety and you can get, you can get worky, drivey dogs that don't know how to turn off. So there's a time and place for everything. Thing and, and, and timing and awareness is important and, and, and being aware of your energy and the message you're trying to get across is is um, very very important all right so um, that is that so if you guys have another question I'll go ahead and I'll uh, that, that's awesome Jackie that gives us gives us doing better I saw that but um sometimes when I think too much into reading I lose my uh, my train of thought so I try to read it real quick but stay stay in my thought um I have been charge a nip by a mouth for holding food but loved when I pronged them. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, there's, there's different things. I am. Nature Corrects is going to be one of our next blogs. For those of you that, um, that are new to us, we just started blogging. Our second blog just came out. We just came out with the most abusive tool in dog training. Um, that's on our website. The company name is Dream Come True Canine, letter K number nine. We just, um, uh, the website is, D, is the initials, dctk9.com. Um, letter K number nines and uh, we have uh, positive reinforcement was our first blog I think it's fantastic. It's one of my favorites. It's our first one um, special place in my heart and then uh, we have our second blog um, By uh, Yeah, thank you so much And we're gonna try to get uh, one out a week and and Ross this guy Ross who's been a huge fan He wanted to move down here to work with us. Um, we just didn't we just didn't have a place for him. Um, he's a great writer and he's been taking some Periscope topics and kind of taking the information we're giving him and turning him into a blog and we've been giving him feedback. I know we messed up on 32. We haven't been able to get it out. I gotta try and, and, and get it done uh, Get it done tomorrow. We've just been so, 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 hey, no. We've been so busy. Um, it's been hard. It's, it's been tough. We're, we're, uh, we just got a bunch. We got over 100 uh, inquiries for a new dog walker after putting the ad on Craigslist. So we have to go through a bunch of interviews, getting a lot of interviews from people that just don't fit, fit the part. Um, so there's, there's a lot that we're going on. And right now what's happening is Jen, who is like my admin, who's also a trainer here, she might be on here right now, is like a dog trainer doing admin. And because we lost our walker, is walk taking on that route. And while she's taking on that route, um, I'm here more on top of the times that I'm here. So like we're in double time, you know what I mean? And Ozzy's working and then, and then uh, like we have, we're training a, a new person as a kennel manager. So there's a lot going on and, um, and there's only so much time in the day, but we're working, we're, we're working and we're trying to give you as much free content as possible. But uh, thank you guys so much for, for watching this. I think this is a topic I've wanted to do for a while, but never got around to it. And um, I think Nature Corrects is, is certainly going to be a blog for sure. For sure. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We hit a million hearts on Periscope. Now let's get let's get to two million. And um, if you guys have any ideas for how we can differentiate between these Periscope topics and our Facebook Live topics, um, feedback is welcome. Guys, on the Instagram page, um, I'm sorry, not on the Instagram page, on the Facebook page, we just finished putting out a little bit of a contest. If you guys can guess um, what the new dog is in, the boarding train, um, why he's in his name and all that stuff. You guys get a free, a free DCT canine hat. So um, the, the first two people to comment with that, get on it. It's on our Facebook page. Um, a little bit of a hint and a cheat sheet. We, we did um, uh, a post about him, some type of video post prior. So, um, <laughs> so, uh, so get on it guys. All right, thanks so much. Thanks for the hearts. Thanks for all the love. Um, thanks for sharing this. If you haven't shared it, share it away on Facebook, on Twitter, whatever it is. Invite people. Um, let's keep this information going because people need to hear it. All right. All right, guys. Later.